Welcome back to Duckman Cycles VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. But we're back today, and I was going to work on my 1956 Beetle, but if you can't tell behind me by the sound of a cow pissing on a flat rock, you guessed right. Yep, it's raining like hell. And the sky just opened up. Once again, blue skies, and this crap just comes out of nowhere. <sighs> Well, anyway, I've got some parts that came in this week and a really awesome story to go with it. So we're going to go ahead and hop onto my workbench inside, and I'm going to demonstrate the parts, and hopefully the rain will stop, and at some point today I can finish up the rest of this video by installing said parts onto Eleanor, my 1956 Chop Top Volkswagen Beetle. So as always, you guys, if you enjoy my videos, like, comment, subscribe, and please click that like. If you're watching my videos, you should be liking them. Just just click the likey, 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 unless you think they absolutely suck. Then, you know, do the opposite, but you got to do what you got to do. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and hop inside and uh, get the hell out of this rain. Yeah, it's slowing down a little bit, but it, the direction it's coming from, which is the north, it's not looking any better. All right. <laughs> While it continues to rain outside, I figured I would show you real quickly what I've got. Now this, now this is something I had actually been looking at for a little while, and I was going to do anyway. Uh, but because I had done so much cutting work to my rear shock towers, and, uh, well, I've, I've reinforced them, they're probably strong enough. I wanted to put something in place that would keep the shock towers less likely to break, so it's to not only stabilize the shock towers, but also everything else in the rear end. This is something that probably should have come factory from Volkswagen. This is what some people might call a Kaffir brace, or a strut brace, or rear end brace, or in some cases they even call it a traction bar. But what it does is it allows you to tie together key points in the rear end of your Beetle to make everything stronger, tighter, and more rigid. In my case, if I have weakened those shock towers, this should strengthen that all up. I don't need a bar like this for performance reasons right now because of course I am just putting in a stock engine and this is really where this comes into play is when you start doing a lot of a very heavily spirited driving or drag racing you know if you're doing a lot of burnouts it prevents a lot of the wheel hop from happening when that engine and transmission starts flopping on those frame horns and this will help tie that all together there's a big long story that I'm going to give you on this so we're gonna go ahead and get this thing installed and while I'm installing it I'm gonna tell you the story behind it and, and what it took to get this thing and let's just say I almost got screwed and I was a little shaken up about it for a little bit but you know it was never about the money that I spent it was just about getting the product that I needed to, to get my car together for this car show that's coming up I, I wanted to have this more about that in just a second let's go ahead and get outside and start working on this car Okay, here we are back outside. There's Eleanor, my 1956 Chop Top Beetle. And beneath here we have the chassis. This is my build that's going underneath here, and yes, it is IRS. And yes, it is a Porsche rear end on here from Porsche 944. That chassis is going to go underneath this Beetle. A little combination of early and late. Should give me the best combination of both aesthetics and handling. All right, so what we got to do here is we got to put the shock absorbers on and we got to start installing the strut brace. And when I start putting this together, I'm going to tell you the long story as to how this bar wound up in my possession and about how I nearly got screwed. Okay, looking at everything over here, it looks like we're putting the original shock bolts back into the towers, but putting them in in reverse. Got them ready to go. We've got these triangular shaped wings and they appear they are going to go in here also. Trying to figure out which one's left side and which one's right side. Looks to me like that one's going to be left side because of that 45 degree angle on it. It's going to go in the shock just like that. And then of course we got to install a shock absorber and I'm not going to cut the straps off of these just yet because I'm actually missing the bolts that go on the bottom so unfortunately I can't install it on the bottom so we're just going to let them dangle for the time being and just get this strut brace put into place so that way everything looks good and these shock absorbers I gotta put these bushings in actually I'm gonna be working on the top the bottom bushing is uh, actually going to have to be different because I discovered that the Porsche 944 bolts that go on the bottom here are actually a different size. And I've only got one of the bolts, but I'm actually going to have to drill the bushing out probably about a millimeter or so, make it a little bit bigger. Not too big of a deal, but it's one of those things. But you just push these suckers right in. Just like that. Get them in there and try to get them as even as you can on either side. I think we're good. Okay. Next, we got to put our wings on. 
And judging by that 45 degree angle and this side being the flat side, this one should be long on the right. You can already see how this is coming together. Now my story on this is, as I knew I wanted to buy one of these strut bars, and I didn't just want a 4.1, I wanted a 6.1. And the reason why is because if you remember, I cut up these shock towers and I welded in a new backing over here because I completely shaved off the other side of it. And I had to do that in order to make these spring plates for the 944 clear the shock towers. There was just no other way to do it. In doing that, there was a concern, of course, that I may have weakened the shock tower. So this strut brace will actually tie it all together to the IRS pivot point and to the transmission frame horn mounts here. So this whole rear end will be one stiff component, but there's only one manufacturer that makes the six points. And I'm not going to tell you who it is. I'm not going to push his name positive or negatively because I have a really shitty story to go with it. Now while the product actually does seem it's okay, the situation of me trying to order this thing has uh, it's kind of a kind of a kick in the nuts. It wasn't a good experience as well. So we're gonna go back to a little over a month ago. Back when I was working on the rear suspension here and I was welding this all back together. I went ahead and I got this ordered and I spent a lot of money on it and it's almost almost two and a half times that of a Chinese equivalent part. About a week after about a week after I ordered it, I finally got an email and, and I hadn't been trying to chase them about, you know, where's my product or being one of them jerky customers because there are a lot of jerky customers out there. I know I also operate in retail too and I own my own business so I know how people can be. I wasn't going to chase them and I wasn't going to make a big deal out of it. You know, I had more than two months to worry about it before my car show coming up in October. So, here's your first brace right across the top. I have to expand it now to uh, make it fit. I went ahead and ordered it. About a week later, I got my first email, and I was expecting to have a tracking number in it, but what I was told instead was, well, I'm sorry, we don't have a black one in. We also don't have any red ones right now. Would you prefer a silver one? And I'll ship you the silver one. We'll get that in the post right away. Or you can take a refund. Or you could just wait until we get the black ones in. It might be several more weeks or the end of the month or something like that. You know, and I, and I put a real short and sweet email. Just send a silver one, please. Thank you very much. Well, two more weeks go by, and I still have not seen a tracking number. And I'm trying to figure out, you know, where's my parts at? Without trying to get angry or upset with the, uh, the company or the guy that I ordered it from, I sent a very nice email that said, and I'd be expecting my parts sometime soon. About 48 hours later or so, I received a response that said, had your parts sitting here since you ordered it. We sent you an email the day after you ordered to let you know that you have to pay shipping on it. And I, and I thought to myself, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Going back to the beginning when I placed this order, one of the reasons why I did was because I had free shipping. And, and you should do this, I did too. I took a screenshot of the order on the screen so I knew exactly what I was getting. And if you ever order something from anybody online and you're ever going to have a conflict or, or some type of dispute, you want to make sure you have all of your ducks in a row. Needless to say, I've been down this road many, many times before. And I've had customers that try to screw me out of things too, so I always take screenshots of everything wherever possible and try to make sure that I have adequate records of everything that I purchase or everything that, that matter that I sell. But knowing that uh, one of the reasons why I bought this product so quickly and didn't really think twice about it is because I had free shipping. And I figured, you know, it's going to save me about 30 bucks. Let's just go ahead and make the order right now. So I got the part ordered. His first email told me he didn't have it in stock. The second email, he told me I didn't pay shipping. He says, this is how we do business here. He said, uh, we don't charge the shipping up front, so we know exactly how much we can charge you later. We get you the best deal. You know, he acts like he's looking out for me. But at the same time, he's, he's trying to get more money out of me. And it gives me a total for the shipping. It was like $25 or something. I'm thinking, well, it's only $25, but wait a minute. You know, when I made the purchase, I qualified for free shipping. So where's my part? You know, I don't want my money back. That was one of the options I had been offered in the first email. You know, I just want the silver bar that we agreed that you would send because I didn't have the black one. Well, I chose not to argue with the guy and chose to just wait, you know, because I was pretty angry at the time. And you know what happens when you're angry? You say a lot of the wrong things. And it's the hardest thing sometimes just to wait. So I chose to wait. And the really crazy thing was, it was no more than about 10 minutes later, 
probably not even 10 minutes later, it was probably more like five minutes later, got another email from the guy with a tracking number. You know, he didn't say, oh, wait a minute, you know, we know it's qualified for free shipping, you know, here's your tracking number. It was just a tracking number. And I was wondering if that part was actually going to ship with that tracking number or not. So once again, I bit my lip and I chose to be quiet. Didn't say anything at all. And I had a discussion with a friend of mine who's uh, much more liberal than I am, and much more accepting of, of people. <laughs> because I'm not, not so much, not always. I think I'm putting this together wrong. Yeah, I think I got some of the pieces on here wrong. Uh, the one on the left here is wrong. So, I talked to a friend of mine who's much more liberal and much nicer to people than I ordinarily am. Much more accepting. And I explained the situation to her. And she agreed with me. You know, I was in the right. And I qualified for free shipping. I should have free shipping. I told her I had the screenshot. I told her the whole situation. And she says, yeah, just, just go ahead and wait. You know, if somebody gave you a tracking number, just see what happens. Maybe the box will show up. So, uh, she and I both agreed, you know, we'll just go ahead and we'll wait and see what happens and if this product shows up. Rather than, like I said, getting angry and go ahead and email this guy and say all kinds of nasty shit or start asking questions, I decided just to just ignore him and just let him be. Don't say anything, ignore it. I checked the tracking on the product. I think it was a Sunday or a Monday or something when he sent the tracking number. I checked it on the following day, let's just say Monday, and it was still in California. So I checked again on Tuesday, and again, it was still in California. I checked again on Wednesday, and I checked again on Thursday, and in California. It has not left the facility. Friday, I forgot about it. Saturday, I got busy. So I didn't even have a chance to do anything about it. So I went to the Niceville Volkswagen show, the uh, Bugs on the Bayou, which is really good, by the way. There's a video on my other channel about it. And uh, I came home because I was getting the fastback ready to go to the Five Flags Speedway for the trip around the track, which is two events in one day. So once again, the video for that is also on my other channel, over on VV the Duck VV, so please check it out. And uh, in that hour or hour and a half that I was home, the mailman came, rang the doorbell, and handed me a box. And I wasn't expecting anything to be shipped. I, I didn't even know what the hell it was. When I opened it up, it was this. And I have not received an email saying, you know, thank you, or there was an error and you know, the, the shipping, tracking, or whatever the hell the deal was. But I got a feeling what happened is, is he was playing kind of a poker game with me, and I think this is a game that I won. He went ahead and created a tracking number just to get the odometer running on PayPal, because at this point it has been almost a month. I have not seen my product. There's nothing stopping me from filing a dispute and a claim, and of course that's going to be a negative, negative count on his record. And he could lose his PayPal account over it. Which, by the way, this guy has numerous email addresses. So I can almost guarantee you he's got numerous PayPal accounts just the same way. You're only supposed to have one, but, you know, I, I have worked with a lot of other people, and not all my business partners have been as honest or as straightforward with everybody as I've been. And they open a lot of different merchant accounts, and they open a lot of different PayPal accounts because they, they well, they're not always honest, and they do like to take advantage of people or... If you have a customer that's been difficult, you know, and they do get a charge back, they just move over to the other account when the account gets closed or if it's pending and they won't let you take any money. You know, I've been down this road. I've seen these things happen. So I knew exactly what he was doing. He created that tracking number because then he could say, hey, the check's in the mail. Or I would have to wait longer for a PayPal dispute to go through. And in the interim, I probably would either see a product or he would be able to have time to give an appropriate answer as to why we haven't received product yet. Saturday, my box arrived. I opened it up, and, and I couldn't believe it. I mean, to my surprise, there was my complete set. With that all said and everything all set aside, I was going to send an email, and I had screenshots of everything, and I was going to let him know this is free shipping. The invoice says it. This is what I paid for. This is what I'm expecting. Just send me my product. It was never about the money. I didn't want the money. I wanted the product. This was something that I needed for my vehicle. I didn't want to argue with him. I didn't want to battle. Just send me my product. Make your money, send me my product, and go away. But anyway, no matter how good of a product this may turn out to be, I'm going to tell you that I can't recommend dealing with the company that this came from just because of the situation. I mean, just the experience was, was awful. So from now forward, if I need one of these again, uh, I'll find a used one. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm just not going to, to deal with somebody that... Uh, it's going to be that difficult with customer support. Almost forgot to add. When I was talking to my friend, I decided to Google this guy's name. 
and his company name, and for that matter, I googled his email addresses, and I discovered that they had a uh, kind of a uh, customer review rap sheet, if you will. Not quite BBB. I didn't even try hitting the BBB. I just googled, and I discovered that um, a lot of people are saying the same things. They send them money and no product. You know, where's my product? And at that point, you know, my my it felt like somebody punched me in the stomach. You know, I mean, I, I didn't feel well over the whole situation. I felt really bad. I just wanted my product. I didn't care about the money, as I said before. I didn't care. But this guy just had some really, really awful reviews doing exactly the same thing to other customers. What I ended up doing is just uh, waited that little bit longer, and these parts actually showed up. Am I going to file a negative review about the guy? No. Am I going to share my experience or story with you guys? Well, yeah. But am I going to tell you who he was? No, that's up to you to figure out. If you recognize this product, you already know enough about it. I'm not going to badmouth him. I'm just going to say that uh, his stories didn't match. And when he said that the first time that uh, the part wasn't in, and the second time that he had emailed me before to make sure that I got my, my shipping paid for, I mean, total BS, wheel of lies. And this is what was described in customer reviews. One particular guy said... This guy has a wheel of lies, and he goes around the wheel, just like spinning the Wheel of Fortune, and whatever lie the arrow points on is the one he gives to you. And if it doesn't match or it isn't consist consistent with the last one, it doesn't matter to him because he's got your money. You know, he's <laughs> he's got your money. Enough about him. Fuck all of that. Let's go ahead and get this thing put together. Because it looks like, in the end, it's, it's a pretty decent product. I'm going to say that the fit and finish isn't the greatest, because if you look at these little eyelets at the end here, they don't even match in color. You know, I mean... One of these little things like this, you pay extra for a better product. You think he's gonna make a little bit of a, a little bit of a difference here? The only benefit to that that I can see is you can tell which one's a left-handed thread and which one's a right-handed thread because the lefties are the gold ones, and the righties, of course, would be the other one. But uh, let's go ahead and finish putting this thing together. There's really not too much to this. Um, the most difficult thing is going to be to pull out the uh, IRS trailing arm bolts. If you remember those. Is that re really big funky bolt that goes in the end over here to pull the trailing arm off? Uh, there's actually a little component that slides down in there to get that installed. Let's see how much we can get done. I don't see any reason why we couldn't get this done today. This is actually going in pretty easy. If I didn't do so much stopping and talking, it uh, would probably be done by now. <laughs> I figured to try to make some kind of rhyme or reason out of this. You see all these gold ends? I'm going to try to put them all on one side together. A lot of these pieces just don't fit together very well. And I'm sure that I might be doing it wrong, but you know what? It didn't come with any instructions. Shipping an instruction manual and maybe even an invoice in the box might have been a good idea. Once again, it calls back to the unprofessionalism, if that's even a word, of the vendor from which I bought this. Now, right now is what you see. This is how the four-point braces look like. They attach here, they attach here, and they attach one all the way across. And that's really all there is to it for a four, four-leg system. But because they're going with the uh, six-point, it's going to run down into here like this. So what I'm going to have to do here is I'm going to have to jack up the rear end. And at the same time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these tires and reverse them because. A year ago, when I put this chassis together, I guess it was in September or early October, I actually uh, <laughs> put the wheels on the wrong side. Despite having taken them off numerous times in the interim, and even just uh, last week I had both wheels off at the same time, I just failed, failed miserably at swapping them back to where they need to be. And I don't know, I guess I just wasn't paying attention. To, uh, it really doesn't hurt anything in this situation because it is just a rolling chassis, but in order to do it properly, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take these things off and put them back on so that way nobody calls me out about it anymore. And like I said, I mentioned it a year ago uh, in my, actually, the reveal, the big reveal bit video for Eleanor when it first left the show and I was showing off my trophy. Uh, that's the video that I actually mentioned this in. And that story, just telling that story, really took the wind out of me. It took the wind right out of my sails. I'm going to go ahead and put these little clips in. 
They're just little pins. Since the components that we have installed now actually look proper. And these pins, when you put these in, you don't just clip them in a little bit and stop. You actually shove them all the way through. So that way if they vibrate, they don't try to come out. Some people say on trailer hitches and stuff, you know, go ahead and put a piece of tape on it. No, you don't need no tape on it. Push the whole thing all the way through. All the way through. No tape needed. Okay. I think we're looking pretty good here for the moment. Let's go ahead and get my big ass Allen key. I forget the size of it, but that's what these uh, IRS pivot point bolts are removed with. Meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead and stop the camera. I'm going to get out from underneath here. Oh, this is a convenient handle for standing up. How about that? That's really nice. Now remember, never use a chrome socket on an impact gun. This is an exception because the nuts were loose. I just spun them free. I'm glad I didn't tighten down any of these brake lines yet because I actually had to remove that. Okay, as I said, it would have been really nice if there were some instructions that would have come bundled with this thing, but of course they, it was not. But I did a quick Google search and I managed to find them on their website, so I was able to... Fucking guy with that leaf blower, man, he's been running that thing for about an hour. He's just walking in circles around the yard, just... I don't even know what the hell he's doing. You know, I think he just shut it off. Let's continue the video. <laughs> I managed to find some instructions on their website, but it would have been nice, even if in his email that he sent to me, it said, listen, here's where you go for your instructions, here's how you install it. But no, I didn't get any such thing. Oh, all I got was a headache. Well, thankfully, I had to get my product in the end, but uh, yeah, all it was was a real headache. Well, you want to pull out the IRS bolt, and there's two washers that are behind this here. And if you remember that before, both the washers actually get bundled together, which is kind of weird. Now, they're still in there. They kind of fell in. But when I shove the bolt back through, I can actually fish them through. And you want to put this bracket with the tab facing to the outside of the car this way. And then put your bolt back in. Just like that. And get the sucker threaded back into where she goes. It's kind of interesting that there was actually room in there for it, almost like it was intended to be that way from the factory. Now this, you might have to gently tap it. Probably a mallet would be best, but there it is. Ever so gently. You just want to get it so that way it bumps against the threads. Now when I start turning this, it'll start to go in. seeing a small problem. The problem is, as you tighten this, this little bracket wants to go down and touch the uh, trailing arm. We can't have that, because the trailing arm is going to move. The bracket needs to stay fixed. I don't need a conflict here. It's going to rub a hole in the aluminum, you know, potentially fatiguing it, and causing a crack. So, I think we're going to stop with the bracket in the up position, put the strut on, and lengthen the strut enough so that way it pushes this back to where it needs to be and then finish tightening in this bolt. Okay, here's that strut. It's going to go in here. Remember I said I wanted to put all the gold ends on one side, so this is where that comes into play. This is going to be a little finicky. I think that what I should have done was put the bracket on the end of the strut first because there's no flex in here to be able to uh, slide this all together. Yeah, it's not going to be possible. Okay, we'll loosen that bracket back up and then we'll reassemble it and then put it all back together as one unit. Alright, put this on here. Try to shorten it up a little bit. These are just like tie rods. If you spin the center section one direction or the other, it'll either make it longer or shorter. Rubber mallet probably would have been a much better idea there, but mine was not convenient. There it goes.
All right, what I'm doing right now is I'm lengthening the strut to push that bracket back. All right, we gotta put that bolt back into place. Okay, it was a little tricky getting that bolt centered inside of that bracket. If it doesn't get centered, it pinches it instead, and the actual bolt doesn't go in all the way like it's designed to. So I've got this strut now long enough that it pushes that bracket back this way so it's not going to come into contact with the trailing arm. Alright, now this will need to be torqued down with the proper specification. I'm not going to worry about that right this second because, as with most things on this car right now, it's just a dry fit. We're just making sure the stuff works. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side and then we're going to have a look at this and see what it looks like. And I split my pants. <laughs> well, I gotta say, that uh, looks pretty nice. Fit and finish would have been a little bit better. It did get scratched pretty easily, too, because everything needed to be tweaked a little bit. And I'm sure not all the fault of it is the product, but rather because the rear end on this car is old and has flexed, and I'm sure nothing in it is, is as straight as it should be. But I think the uh, strut bar needs a little room for improvement, but otherwise really not bad at all. Really not bad at all. Nice product. Tie down at six points. I mean... There's no other product on the market that's going to be this strong. It's just this, this looks good. A little heavy though. I gotta admit, it, it did weigh something. It actually was a little bit heavy. Just looking at everything here, it uh, looks good and solid to me. Of course, there's my Porsche brakes that are on here. Alright, the last step said in the instructions was to uh, tighten everything down. It didn't say how tight to make the struts though. You know, like you turn them like a tie rod. I guess there really is no alignment process. But anyway, I just turned them until I started to feel them press against each other. That it was starting to get difficult to turn, stop there. I didn't want to start stretching anything or making anything weird. You know, just, just a little bit of pressure and stop. So, like I said, I don't think I'm making anything weird. Everything should be nice and straight. And uh, it looks pretty good. <laughs> the socket stayed on here by accident. Okay, that shouldn't be too hard to get the transmission in there either. Uh, transmission will go right underneath that top strut. And when I take those two nuts out, the two back struts here, the two rear struts, will actually just swing out of the way. So that won't be a problem at all. Everything should assemble just like stock after that. And I think it's going to be pretty good to go. The only concern I have is, uh, is that going to conflict with the clutch cable at all? I don't think so. I think it's a little higher than that and it should be out of the way. But we're going to find out in just a little time when we get to that point. This part of the video is for you guys that called me out the last time about the directional rotation of the tire. And as I said, this is something that's actually been wrong for, for about a year, and it just finally got noticed, and a couple of you razzed me for it in the last video. And I appreciate you for paying attention. That shows you guys are really, really looking at the fine details. But uh, they are corrected now, and they are being put on the right side. <laughs> Something that I should have done a year ago, and I knew better. Every time I looked at it, I saw it. And nobody even noticed it at the car show, but uh, we'll see what happens this October with all these new upgrades that this car has. And when I get back to welding the rest of that body, i got a lot of welding to do on that body. A lot of little things. I think I covered that in the last video where I did the dashboard. I had to walk around the car and showed some of the spots that I need to weld in and close up. Dashboard came out real nice, though, i got to admit. Dashboard came out really nice. And looking at this uh, set of Porsche brakes that are on here, and I don't know if you can see, but there's actually a really big gap between the caliper and the wheel. I think I could put a smaller set of wheels on here if I wanted to put some 15s on or something if I wanted to. And I was thinking uh, it would be nice to have some 15 steel wheels with stock hubcaps to be able to convert or switch off. They are much lighter than these wheels. I'll get into that in another video, but... Uh, yeah, these uh, aluminum alloy wheels are actually much heavier than the stock steel wheels on a Volkswagen. But weight wasn't a concern. I just used these because I had them. And when I ended up upgrading the Porsche suspension anyway, 5 lug makes it natural. Everything just bolts on without any adapters needed. Okay, here we go. <sighs> Directional rotation that way. <laughs> Very nice. This is my lower shock bolt that came off the passenger side. This is the one I need to match. It is of a slightly larger diameter, so when I put it through this shock, I'm going to have to make a different size bushing for it. But, yeah, that's, uh, look like it's going to work out okay. I mean, everything on here is, is beyond my expectation. I mean, not only does it look good, but I, I think this combination of parts is really going to operate well, too. I think there's going to be a good synergy between everything. I am happy. I mean, just overjoyed. 
And I guess I need to pose for a thumbnail. <laughs> and I can put my brake lines back on now too. One thing to observe, and not so much on this side, but rather on the other side, the brake line actually came right past this and was in the way. So I had to bend this up a little bit and it sits on a tab just to raise it up enough to get it out of the way so I can tighten the braided brake line into it. It's looking pretty good. Hey, thanks for sticking with me through this video. While it was a really simple task to put this together, it might have seemed a little tedious because of the story that I had to tell uh, with what it took to get this part. And <laughs> I still can't believe I got it. I really, really thought I was going to have to go into PayPal claims to try to get my money back on it because, like I said, and I just wanted the part. Just wanted the part. I didn't even want my money. I just wanted the part. I wanted to get this car put together. I didn't know where else I was going to get one. I'd have to keep searching until I found someone with a used one or found somebody else that, that's a reseller. <sighs> anyway, happy that I got what I needed. It's assembled, as you can see, and it looks pretty damn good. It looks pretty damn good. I think this is, this is a good setup that I have going on here. I'm really happy with this. Okay, um, like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck that little dingle belly down there next to the subscribe button so you get updates every time I upload a new video. And don't forget to check out my other channels, Skeeter the Duck and VV the Duck VV, where you'll see my recent car show videos where I visited some local Volkswagen car shows as well as the trip around the track where we took all the air-cooled Volkswagens around the Five Flags Speedway for a lap. Uh, the video is kind of short, but it's fun. You should check it out. I just noticed something. You know, you know, I, I'm on call today, but my phone didn't even go up. Motherfucker. So much for that. Anyways, thanks for watching, you guys. We'll see you next time.